All right, so what I want to do here is I want to talk to you about some of the things we're going to do to make our first project. And your first project is going to be like an about you, but I want it to also um, have things that you like, but I also want it to have a picture of you. So let's talk about how we can do that with your Chromebook. Now, technically, you could use a phone and save it to Google Drive and upload it, but PhotoP actually allows you to take a picture directly in the program. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File, I'm going to go to take a picture and it brings up this screen. Now you'll notice it is currently placing it into a new project, which is fine. Um, I'm using camera one because I actually have more than one camera set up. I have my projector camera set up as well. And then I have take a picture. So all I'm going to do for this is technically I could take a straight on picture, um, but I want mine to be from the side. I thought it'd be kind of neat if I had all the things coming from my head. And I think it's a good idea for you guys too, based on the idea of the project. So I'm simply going to look this way. I'm going to line up my mouse first here so I can see, uh, or so I can know what I'm doing. And I'm just going to look this way, make sure I'm all prim and proper. And then, and what that lets us do is it doesn't look like it did anything here. Um, but if you close this, we now have a new assignment and, or sorry, a new project. And now that we have the new project, uh, we should be able to zoom in out all those things and go over and start eliminating the background. Now, we are going to need to eliminate this background because I'm going to want you to put it onto a separate background. Um, again, you could use things like the magic wand, but remember the magic wand isn't always perfect. Um, so again, you can go in here, maybe I'll trim up my, my beard, maybe I'll trim it for real when I get home, it's a little rough there. Um, but again, the magic wand does work decently if your background is a solid color. So if you want to make it real easy on yourself and you're working on your Chromebook and you have somewhere that you can set up where the color behind you is going to be solid and a high contrast, you could do it that way. But really the way you're going to have to do most things in, uh, in Photopea is you are going to make your actual selections like we've seen before. And again, um, some of these like the strands of hair, we don't need to keep everything there. All right, so again, once oops, once we're happy, we're gonna go around. We're gonna isolate this image just by itself. We're gonna use that um, on a project that is going to show things that you are into. Oops, it could be uh, anything that from, you know, if you play sports to uh, your favorite foods and that kind of stuff. So again, that is how you're going to take a picture and insert it straight into Photopea and it's very easy, very quick and simple to do. All right, I have edited most of the area around my head to be clear. Uh, again, I'm going to be putting a new background in there. I can now select the area and I can uh, actually, oh, why did not let me move myself? Um, I should be able to move myself. There we go. I, was on, I wasn't on the move tool. So I can actually do more with this. For one, I don't like how far over here I am. I wanted it more this direction because I wanna have all the things that I make kind of coming from this direction of my head. So I'm gonna move myself over. Again, I feel like this is, for one, too close to the top of the page and I don't really want it um, on the far left because we could make it like a word bubble, things I'm saying, um, but I want them to come like from my head. So again, I'm going to move it over to this side. Also, I'm not a big fan of centering things. We'll talk about that when we talk about the rule of thirds and the Fibonacci spiral. Um, but for now, I'm going to move my head right here. It doesn't have to be exactly where it was. I'm just going to move it down a little bit. And I feel like that would be a decent crop. Again, control D lets me deselect. And now I have my design for, or my head pretty much edited. There are some small areas that for some reason are still there, but we can clean those up later. It's not a problem. I'm also going to go ahead and rename this edges, just so I know which layer it is, because I'm going to start adding layer by layer by layer. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring in another file, and I'm going to open this from a URL, and I'm going to add it to the current project. Now, this is a picture of Lancaster, and I wanted to incorporate this into, um, into my image. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Now, if I open the image as a, into the current project, what you're going to need to do is rasterize that image. You can see the square here. It makes it a smart object. So the first thing you need to do is two-finger click on it or um, right-click with a mouse 
and then click rasterize. Now the image is editable. And I'm actually wanting to add, now I could make this into the background, but I thought it'd be kind of neat if we messed with um, incorporating it into like my hair. So what I'm going to do is take this image, take my hair, I'm actually going to deselect Control D, and I'm going to try to manipulate this image uh, just into my hair. So I'm going to go ahead and free transform it to begin with, so it's smaller. And again, I'm not going to need all of this top area, uh, but we can edit that out later. So I'm going to put it here. I'm going to go back to my head, and I'm going to use the magic wand for this. And all I'm going to do is click on this area, which shows the hairline. Now, again, I could uh, change the tolerance here. I don't want it to be my face, though. See how when I do that? So I'm going to change the tolerance because I want more of my hair. I'm going to change it to... Let's try and make it like 40 before we get any further. And 40 is way too much, so let's try let's try 35. And again, if it never works, um, you know that could just be a problem that we have to run with. So right here, I think it looks it's decent. It's not exactly what I wanted, um, but it'll work for the sake of this. So what I'm going to do. Um, is I am going to erase some of my head here so that the other image comes through. And in fact, what I could do, I could do the opposite. I could do the, so here is like what's being selected right now. And I'm going to move that up a little bit so that it's more of the city. And if you notice, my hairline goes further down this way. So let's actually stretch it out a little bit. And we lost my selection. I have to go back and do that. So let's go back and reselect it. And here again, um, we're losing a lot of this lighter area. Just for the sake of seeing it, <clears throat> I'm going to click on there. I'm going to select the inverse. And I'm going to hit delete. And what that did is it actually made that section of my head. Now again, I'm going to go back because I still want more of this, even though we might actually change it. I think we could find something else to fill in that space. Um, we could do soccer, things like that. So to begin with, though, let's just zoom back and see how it looks. It looks kind of weird right now because it didn't get all my hair, but it still works. Okay. Um, again, I can change that image up with something else. So I'm going to find another image and then bring that in. We'll see how it looks. All right, so here what I've done is I actually redid my, uh, my selection, and I redid it with the magic wand. And here it's definitely going down into the beard. Um, again, this is not overtaking my picture. My original source image is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually, where, where my hairline kind of goes into the beard, what I'm going to do is take the eraser, which is right here, and I can actually change the uh, strength of the eraser. So instead of just going like uh, that and erasing with it, I'm going to be able to slowly erase. So again, if we are looking at this area um, and I want this to, you know, I don't want my face to look like that. I'm just going to come in here and take back what I want. Now, as I get up in here, though, I don't want that hard eraser line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with the, the uh, pressure of it. Okay, just like if I was pushing lighter with a eraser and not scrubbing as hard. And I can go and actually go back and forth and get lighter and lighter, but I'm going to create more of a fade, okay, into this line. So you can kind of see a line right here. I want to get rid of that. And you can start seeing where that comes through. And again, the same thing is up in here. Uh, we, can, we can add a fade to it. We can also go to Filter and see, Sharpen. And we can, uh, basically, we can unsharpen. And we can play around with this, and it should create a softer look. You can kind of see the background there um, doing that. But again, it's not something necessarily, you know, see how we don't want that. Um, but we want it to kind of blend in more. So right now, it kind of looks like I have a helmet on, and we don't want that. You can also play around with the opacity of the layers. So the opacity of the layers is literally... Um, how solid the layer is. So if I go lighter, you'll start to see my hair come back. So if that's something we wanted to keep, we could do that. 
But I am also able to, again, take that eraser, go to my brush, and really, and again, there's lots of options if you don't want it to be, you know, a perfect brush, uh, like round. And I'm just going to slowly go around and soften the edges. And again, this is something you can play with. It's not something that you should just jump into, and we don't want a hard line there. And again, if we're working on a scale um, where we're zooming in and out, it's not going to be as noticeable once we zoom all the way out on the project. Oops. Again, but you can see the line where I've done some of my erasing. And again, I don't really like that. I'm going to try to go step by step a little more. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is open something else up. Now, you could do this. You'll notice I started using a mask over here. Um, the way I did it earlier will work. This still looks like a helmet. We're going to blend that out later. Um, but we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how to use a mask because you can do that too. So what I'm going to do is go to File. I'm going to open another URL. And again, um, some of the things you open aren't necessarily going to work that well for your design. You'll have to go back and forth. It'll really be something that you depend on. So here what I'm using is I have this dice bag, and I have all these dice pouring out of it. And what I want to do is take the dice, I really like how they work, and but I don't want to use the bag, the bag's too light. So what I'm going to do here is first of all, I am going to take the smart, uh, I have a smart object, you'll see there's a square. So the first thing I need to do when I add something to my layer is I need to rasterize. Now that it's rasterized, I can edit it. That means for one, I could you know take out the background um, but what I really want to do is I just want these dice, and I'm going to take all of the bag out, and I'm just quickly hitting it with the magic wand. And then what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm actually going to just go ahead and use the lasso tool. really want to get rid of it. And I really just want all of these dice. And that can be what I want it to Let's use polygonal. That's why I hate the lasso tool. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I might make these larger or smaller, um, and I'm going to use the rectangle tool. I can make them nice and big. Let me transform. And what I'm going to do with these is I am going to actually make them part of my shirt. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to do a mask. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to turn this layer off, and we're going to go back to my layer, the edges layer. And I'm going to use the magic wand and click on the bottom. And you can see that it made a selection here, and everywhere here is a little different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take that arm. I'm going to click now on this layer. And I am going to click this button down here, which is, it creates a mask. So it should get rid of everything except the selected area. It's going to merge them together. And there we go. So what you can see here, um, if you see this black and white area, is in white, you'll see the small selection of the area and it created the mask. Now, if you do that and you're like, oh, I don't like the way that looks, you can always go back and select a different mask area. So for example, if I didn't want that area, Go back to the hedges layer. Um, I can say, hey, how about my, uh, you know, my beater here? And I could do the same exact thing by creating a mask with beard. So now my beard is made out of dice. You can do this wherever you want. And again, if, if you do that and you're like, oh, I really wish I didn't do that. I like the other one better. Well, just go back in time and find where it was. Okay. So again, here's my selection. And if you want more selected than that, you just need to change the tolerance of your wand. If you want less, again, change the tolerance of the wand. But all I'm going to do is go back up here to the eyeball, and I'm going to, again, click the mask button, and bam, there it is. Now I'm going to go find another object to mask along with my background and image. All right, so I went and found a soccer ball. Again, I'm going to go File. I'm going to open it as a URL. I'm going to paste that in there. 
and I'm going to again add it to the current project. All right, so now that that image has come in, you can see it's a very large image, and I really don't want any of this except for um, this soccer ball. So for one, I'm going to shrink this down, and I'm going to use some simple tools such as this selection, uh, the rectangle selection tool. I just made a selection, and oh, and I went to delete it, but I couldn't because I forgot to rasterize my layer. So first, again, when we add something to the new project, we always have to right-click or two-finger click and go to rasterize. And now we're good to go. Now, for this, we could uh, we can do more editing, but before I get any further, I want to see what happens if I maybe put this soccer ball um, as my forehead. That's what I was thinking. So the first thing I want to do is free transform it, and I want it to fit on my the size of my head. I can't see through it, so I'm not going to be able to edit it the right size. So what we're going to do is go over here to opacity, and we can lower the opacity to the point where we can see both the soccer ball and my head. And we will be able to line those things up pretty easily. That would make it a good actual head there, too. All right, once I'm happy with it, I'm going to bring my opacity back up, go back to my hedges layer, use my magic wand, make my selection, and then if I want to merge that, and again, this might look you know really bad, but we're going to try it. So I'm going to go back to the soccer layer, and I'm going to hit my mask. And there, now, we have this weird, uh, it almost looks like I have war paint on of a soccer ball. But I don't dislike it. I definitely think it could have been done better. Um, but the hair here is really what we need to work on. So we, we might need to smudge these areas. There's a smudge tool over here. Um, but again, I don't necessarily want this to look the way it did. So no problem. Just go back okay and if again I was thinking oh you know I, I really need that to um, be in there differently I can always take control of the polygonal lasso tool go in and do the selection myself so if I really thought you know oh it, was, it looks bad which it does <laughs> again it's just kind of a practice lesson but if I wanted to make this area more here and, and definitely this first mask that I had uh, where we're missing the space here for the city I should have gone in and originally done that um, so my hairline was actually all the way up here regardless of it receding we, it's not that far yet um, so here we have the top of my head and if we wanted to see how that looks again we're going to throw the mask on there and there it is and again I really don't like this area being that hard line but that's something we could work in um, we could definitely erase some of that to create more of a gradient to it. And again, that's something we will go through. But for now, we can start seeing how this image is becoming kind of more, uh, me, more about me or the things that I like as I work. And all I'm doing is using the magic wand. I'm loading new images. And I load them, unload them. And I'm using this right here. It's called it's a mask. And what it does is it just cuts everything except the selected area, okay? And I'll do one more. I'm going to find one more thing, and then really we'll just try to focus on making it better. All right, for the last thing I'm going to add, I went ahead and I found, now you can add more, um, but just for the last thing for me, I'm going to add this uh, paint splatter. And I am going to, again, there's my box, so I need to rasterize the layer. And I do want us to have um, a nice background. I feel like this one is just a little too busy. So I'm going to incorporate it back into my uh, design here. So again, I'm going to click on the hedges layer. And I'm going to click somewhere on here that I want to make um, this look. And again, if you do this and you're like, oh, it's too much, you can always go back and we can always mess with it. Oops, don't do that. Okay. So I'm going to move this up, I'm going to move this down, and we are going to do another raster mask. And you can see how now it's become part of my shirt. Now, there are several ways that we can make things look blended together better. For example, this looks really, really poorly done. I don't like that hard line. 
um, I definitely would need to blend that. And you can do that using the eraser and going step by step with it. Um, but there are also layer modes here. So if I click on the soccer ball layer and I click on these, right now we're in normal. There are tons and tons of options here. One of them is dissolve, and right now it doesn't look like much, um, and, but each one is different. So we're going to go to um, screen, and already it's lighter, but we could also mess with the opacity even more. Okay, again, it's still not getting rid of our hard line here. We could go to uh, let's see. Let's see. Should be one that allows us to merge them better. Let's see what I want there. So it's a little different than Photoshop, but it is on here. I don't know. I'm not seeing it. Um, but again, I really would want to get rid of that. In fact, I probably would get rid of it in general. Um, but let's go to the city. So this part. And right now, you can see I have it in screen. You can do dissolve, so it's a little more vibrant. But when you did screen, it kind of allowed some of it to look more like hair coming through. Um, but you can also do that. I'm trying to think of what I used to do. Oh, overlay. So overlay will allow it to really blend in. Um, so you can still see my hair, but you can see the buildings still in there. Again, it's a little harder to see, but if you want something to be there but not be so bright, it would be a great way to do it. Uh, again, so let's look at maybe my shirt, the splatter painting, and for that, we're going to go to And again, you can see how I still have the effect, but it's a little different. Now, again, I kind of like the shirt being crazy, but if it's too bright, you can also mess with the eyes. Okay. Um, so again, I took the soccer ball out, so I would be able to add that somewhere else, but we also still need to do a background. So if I wanted, I could actually take the soccer ball and maybe make that my background. Uh, and lastly, and I'm not going to go any further with that, but lastly, I want you to use text. So there's type right here. And you stretch out where you want to put the text. And you'll notice right here there are text options. Okay, all of these are different types of text. You can go through and pick out whichever one you feel defines you best. Um, and there are also all the different colors. Okay, so we have all the colors here, colors here. Right now it's in black. Here's the size, um, and we can look at all these. We can even load fonts. Um, we're not going to get into that though right now. Let's use this one. And I just want you to put your name, and you can make that whatever color you want it to be. And again, if you want it larger, just larger. And the last thing I'm going to need to do here is I am going to need a background. Um, again, your background can be a solid color if it's if you have everything within your image, or you could use um, you know if you have an image that you couldn't quite figure out how to make it work with your design, you could always put that in the background. All right, so for the last thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to place a background very quickly. I'm going to rasterize that image, and I'm going to put it in the far back. And again, I would need to make that. A larger area and I chose just the uh, like a clipboard like a coach's board for the soccer field just because I felt like there was enough going on already it looked very busy and I liked how it would contrast with the red and green all right text I'm gonna move a little bit so it's not in there and this concludes your basic you know intro to you kind of design now I want you guys to go above and beyond with this you can put more stuff in the background but I do want you to practice using the overlay here with the raster mask.